This short video is going to focus on a new initiative being undertaken <coughs> uh, by the Multi-State Fleet Working Group, and it's, it's called the Secured Information Sharing Pilot. Okay? What this pilot is going to look at is using a federally approved standard called the Personal Identity Verification Interoperable. And that standard validates your identity. So it does that through a number of ways, but typically to get one of these cards, you go through a nomination process and you have to present username, you know, I'm sorry, you have to present a passport and a proof of identity or a driver's license. And it's a very, it's a very, uh, it's a three-step process to get it. But once you get it, you can use this identity card to validate yourself for data sharing. You can do this for a lot of other things, but we're using this for data sharing. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to test this by giving some cards to a few state government, state, state and local government officials. Okay, and several electric sector utility people. And what they're going to do is using these cards, they're going to do four things as part of the pilot. The first thing is they're going to learn how to provide a digital signature to their email. So what they will do is they can use Outlook, for example. They can add a uh, $20 USB card reader to their computer. No software is provided or no software is needed to the computer. It's all done in the cloud. And they will use their PIVI card, as we understand it, to log into an authentication cloud, validate their identity using their card and a password pin, and maybe a thumb swipe if, if needed, um, so they can digitally sign documents. Okay, the second thing we're going to use it for is to encrypt an email. One of the problems with sharing information for public-private sector is information is provided to to somebody who forwards it on to somebody who forwards it on to somebody and it makes its way into the wrong hands, into the media or into people's hands that shouldn't have it or whatever. So by encrypting an email, it'll say that it might be, if I send it from person on private sector to person at state, only the, purple, it's only the intended person of the state can open that email. So that's one thing we're going to also do is just to test the encryption of emails. The third thing we're going to test is the encryption of files. We found during the ice storms in 2013, 2014, that the private sector can provide data, sensitive data, to states who can then tell the private sector on how to route those vehicles here versus there, how to get through toll stations and way stations faster based on that data provided. That data is sensitive. It cannot be used for anything other than operational purposes. If not, they just won't provide it. So by encrypting files, Okay, the file can be encrypted, attached to a Gmail or Yahoo mail or even secure mail, whatever, sent to the intended party. They can open the email, but they can't open the file unless they have a PIVI card. Okay, and the third, the fourth one we're going to look at is encrypting a portal where we can introduce, before you log into the portal to see information, public or private, you have to validate your identity. So we're looking at those four things right there. Why are we doing that? Because the private sector has lots of information that's sensitive. The public sector has lots of information that's sensitive. So by proving the use of this standard, which is being used by 40 to 50 million people already across the globe for <coughs> uh, the, the sharing of digital information, um, it provides many benefits to them. The big one is it reduces the cyber security risk dramatically. Uh, from the DOD, the cyber security is at least 50%, if not more, is based on stolen identity. So if you have an identity management program, you can eliminate at least half of the cyber threats that, that, that uh, plague most organizations. Okay? Um, the other thing it's going to do is build a trusted framework. By building this slowly over time, the trust will develop. On the state side of this, you'll have state police they need a trusted network to do this. You'll have State Department of Transportation, you'll have State uh, Department of Emergency, Emergency Management, and you'll have Homeland Security, you could have Health in the future. Um, the nice part about this, it's a cloud-based technology uh, that's, that's being used by the DOD and many of its contractors, so building a trusted framework is very important. Once that trust is there, people tend to share more and more information. I think one of the other things, too, is this is proven 
This standard is proven, as I, as I mentioned before. Millions of people are already using it. We're adapting it for this very small pilot, but the whole point of this pilot is to expedite what everybody needs, and that is power restoration. If we can help restore power faster, everybody wins. And so that's the whole goal of this pilot, is to build a trusted environment, to share sensitive information, improve cybersecurity for everyone involved, and the end result is expediting power restoration efforts around the country.